Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all of this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. <laughs> Hi there, boys and girls. You know, in the course of a year's work, a forest ranger is apt to get a lot of odd and unusual assignments, and one of the most unusual is what I'm going to tell you about today. It has to do with an almost forgotten chapter of American history, a true story of bravery and sacrifice, and yet in part so dreadful that even now, over a hundred years later, people still don't like to think about it, and yet it really happened to real people, a group of pioneers known as the Donner Party, who crossed our part of the West way back in 1846. One man thought he could find out, and that's where today's story begins. It's the Donner Party treasure. Hey, look out there. You've got the tree almost chopped through. I know. Here she comes. Now, now we'll investigate this one. Hmm. Well? Nothing. Nothing. It's in one of these. I know it is. Mr. DeLong, we've been out here in Wasatch Mountains two weeks now. Walk, walk, walk. You point out tree, you say chop down, and I chop down. Well, you look in top of the tree, then we walk, 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 and you find another tree, then you say chop... I'm paying you to chop down trees, not to talk. But I got a right to know what You've we're... got a right to do as you're told. Now, let's get moving. I'm looking for one tree, and one tree only. And I'll find it if I have to chop down every tree in these mountains. Stuffy. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't rightly made up my mind. She kind of wanders around. First she's one thing, then she's another. Sure is pretty, though. Sounds like the tune the old cow died on. <laughs> you just don't appreciate good music, son. <laughs> if you're looking for Bill, you're looking in the wrong place. He ain't here. He's up flying around them Wasatch Mountains. Uh, whatever for. There's nothing up there but wilderness. Wilderness and the craziest pair of lumbermen I ever heard tell of. Lumbermen? Well, that's not logging country. There's no way to get the logs out. I know, but them fellas in there lumbering just the same. Why? I reckon that's what Bill would like to know, too. The aerial survey boys reported a whole parcel of trees down, and Bill flew up to investigate. Oh, I sure wish he'd taken me along. That's where you and me is different, Henry. I'm sure glad he didn't take me along. I don't hold them there, Larry Flames. They're only a fad, anyways. Yes, 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 maybe this is the one. Maybe this will turn out to be the one. Uh, no, no, it isn't. I'll find it, though. I'll find it. Hey, caribou. Yeah, Mr. DeLong. Let's get moving. Hold your horses there, Mr. DeLong. I ain't a mule, you know. I'm a mountain man, born and bred and proud of it. But even I can't chop down these pines all day long without stopping. All right, all right, all right. Sit down and rest. A little while. That's all right. Even not too long. Uh, 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 that's better. Uh, the leaves are turning. Fall weather is at hand. Fall. And I've got to be finished and done and out of here before winter sets in. Yeah. 
not getting out of here, but winter was what hurt the Donner Party. What? What do you know about the Donner Party? What? What's all the shouting for? All I said was... I know what you said. I heard you. What I demand to know is what you meant when you made that remark about the Donner Party. Great snakes. I never heard a man get so excited. I just said winter weather was... Answer my question. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, the Donner Party was heading west in 46, and Dilly dollied along so slow and got stuck in the snow. Uh, right here in these valleys where we're at right this minute. Well, they got stuck here with snow 40 foot deep. No food, and, well, then they... They what? Well, they ran out of food. Some of them died. Most of them. And then, them that was left, they... Yeah, I know all about uh, that. That there stuff's all written down in books. It was a mountain man got him out in the spring. What was left of Yes, him. yes, yes. But what made you just happen to mention the Donner Party? That's what I demand to know. Well, this being uh, Donner country, it just come into my head quick like, I guess. Oh, very well, I see. But don't mention them again, do you understand? Now, hand me my binoculars. I'm going to look for another tree. <laughs> Where's Bill? Well, he gone again. He come back from Wasatch Mountain, talk on phone, and take plane to New York City. New York City? Well, what on earth did he go to New York City for? Well, look in bookstore. But why? Well, long story. But he hunt for clue. Clue? Oh, wow. That means there must be a mystery somewhere. Oh, plenty of mystery. Yeah, but there hasn't been any. Say, has all this got something to do with those men Bill went up to the Wasatch Mountains about? Ah, uh, you hit nail on head. See our map on wall there. Sure, it's our whole territory. Hey, Bill has a transparent overlay thumb tight right over the part where the Wasatch Mountains are. Ah, you look good. You get clue. Let's see. This red line winding along, Bill has marked Rod of the Donner, party 1846. The black dotted line he has marked route followed by timber cutters DeLong and Caribou. This year, the both lines are the same. Huh. Who are DeLong and Caribou? And who are the Donner Party? Uh, Caribou is what we call a mountain man. Maybe the last one left, although there used to be hundreds. They men who want to live all their lives up in mountains, trapping, fishing, only coming out once a year in spring for more supplies. And this DeLong? Uh, he mystery man. Bill talked to him. Mr. DeLong get angry. Mr. DeLong have timber cutting permit. All legal, all okay. Permit say Mr. DeLong can cut timber in Wasatch Mountain. Mr. DeLong only cut old trees. Everything okay. Mr. DeLong pick our tree caribou chopped down. Well, what's wrong then? Well, Mr. DeLong gets so mad when Bill asks question. Bill gets suspicious something funny. He's not sure what. Do you ask him for identification? Well, you say he's lumber expert, but he tell a big lie. Mr. DeLong, New York City book fella. Sell old book in old bookstore. Oh, junk store. No, he sell old, old book. Oh, an antique book dealer. Rare stuff. Uh -huh. But Bill phoned Mr. DeLong, New York City address. Man, there say Mr. DeLong sell him bookstore. Then DeLong clear out. Take only one book and come west. I've been cutting timber for nearly 60 years, but I ain't never seen a system like yours. How many trees I cut down? That one there is the 143rd. You got that all written down that little book of yours? Yes, yes, I keep a record. Hey, get the saw out of your pack. Uh, Sergeant, say, um, I know I ain't, you ain't told me nothing, and I ain't asked you nothing since we had that there flare up, but uh, I ain't a woodsman for nothing. I don't know this one thing. I saw across the tree right there at the top, uh, through that knot. Sergeant... Why, well, I noticed that uh, when we find a tree with a dead top, you get there snorting and cavorting like a, like an old horse and fly sign. Saw, saw. Sure. But uh, what do you want with jack kinds that ain't no blasted good anyways, especially with dead tops, is more than I can see. <sighs> and she just needs a pick. Get out of my way. Mm. Uh, nothing. Now let's get going. Yeah. I was just admiring them little maple trees over yonder. See them? Leaves is beginning to turn. <laughs> well, 
little more frost like last night. Hurry up, I said. <laughs> I thought that'd get her eyes out of you. My land. How come you got on that old beat-up outfit? Why, you look like an old-time bush in the head, turkey feather and all. <laughs> A gray wolf go on secret mission with Chilkoot. Chilkoot? Uh, who's Chilkoot? Here I be, all dolled up in the mountain clothes and ain't wore for 40 years. Yeah, this here buckskin never wears oh, but out. your name isn't Chilkoot. Oh, yes, it is. But this here secret mission to me and gray wolf are going on, and we made up the name of Chilkoot. And I'm the last of the old mountain men from Alaska. It's supposed to be, that is. And this here busted brave is me down and out engine pal. What? Well, what? Bill send telegram and tell us dress up like old forest pack rats and go find DeLong and Caribou. And then we don't let on we're part of the U.S. government. And we get their confidence. And we see if we can find out just what they're up to. Then we report back to Bill. Bill saying telegram, we keep this secret. Sure. So you dress up like uh, like real old timers and try to get the information Bill needs without letting DeLong and Caribou know what's up. Hey, uh, did Bill wire you any new clues? Uh, just one, and it don't make no sense to me. What's that? After Mr. DeLong's sell store, he went to every single secondhand bookstore in New York and bought every book that had anything to do with story of Donner Party. Donner Party? Is that the clue? Well, I, I left a history book about the Donner Party on Bill's desk, Henry. You'll want to read it. That wind had stopped blowing. Winter coming, I guess. Kind of a ghostly sound, though. Especially when a guy's all alone in the house. Oh, well. I might as well read about that Donner party. Let's see. Ray Wolf has the place all marked here for me. In the year 1846, a group of pioneers bound for Oregon found themselves trapped by snow in the Wasatch Mountains. Winter came early that year and was marked by exceptionally deep snow, often 40 feet or more. Unable to go forward, the Donner family and their friends made what camping arrangements they could. And in spite of repeated efforts to get across to California, most of the unhappy group died of exposure and starvation. The best record to the terrible adventure was left by Tasman Donner's journal. Tamsin being a child of eight at the time. Parts of this journal were apparently lost. The Breen family were reputed to have taken along many thousands of dollars in jewels, but this fortune has never been found. Overcome by fear and despair, deranged by shock and horror, some of the maroon party enacted the most dreadful chapter in American history. To stay alive, they ate the frozen bodies of their comrades. Oh my. They what? Oh, man. I guess I'll sleep with the light on tonight. B Bill might come back unexpectedly. and It'd look better if I had a light on, just in case. <laughs> Trout looks powerful good sizzling there in that there skillet there. Oh, I sure do. Uh, we've been camping with them fellers for five days now. Uh, you found out anything yet? Uh, not much. We make friends. Mr. DeLong will talk more later, maybe. Uh. Uh, the axes quit. Yeah. They come for supper pretty soon now. I eat good supper and maybe talk more. Yep. He sure hangs on to that old book, don't he? Never lets go of it. Sleeps with it. Must be clue. Yep. But I can't see. What's the matter, Stumpy? Uh, I got a crick in my neck from looking up at the tops of all them trees like Mr. DeLong does. Uh, crick in neck. Clue. Huh? What's that? Yeah. Why does Mr. DeLong all the time look at tops of trees? Well, uh, I don't know. Hey, yeah. here they come. Yeah, so. <laughs> now I got to remember my name is Tilcoot. I like to forgot yesterday. We sure got them fooled. They think we're just tramps out to catch fish and, uh, and loaf. <laughs> Howdy, boys. You drop along and set. The supper's ready. Thank you. Thank you. A well-cooked meal will taste good. 
Well, we are lucky you happen to be camping out right where I'm working. Yep, uh, pass your place, gents. That uh, fire feels good, too. Beginning to get cold, my head. Nonsense. Uh, it gets cold powerful early around these parts. Uh, Tis uh, early cold and early snow that fooled the Donners. The Donners? Yep. Now we're camping right at one of their campgrounds uh, right this very minute. What? It's a fact. What do you know about the Donners? Well, more than any man living, I reckon. Why, I've known folks that know the Donners. I've talked to folks that talked to the Donners before and after. I know more than what's wrote down in the books. I know that. T- tell me everything you know. Everything. Well, now, uh, I just might and I just might not. If you can tell me anything about the Donners, I don't already know anything. Just one single fact. I'll pay you $1,000 cash. It's a heap of money. You must be mighty, mighty interested in them donners and their party. I am, yes, I am. Are you looking for that Breen jewelry of any chance? Oh, uh, I... Yes, 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 I am. That's that's it, the Breen jewelry, of course. Uh, certainly, that's what I'm looking for, yes. Well, many men hunt for that. Some say Swiss hit it and come back and got it. Some say Injun took it. Some say it lost in snow. Many men hunt, but never find... The Donners, what about them? There's plenty of Breen still in California. And that jewelry would be there. Oh, they could have it. What? I mean, we could share it and uh, make some sort of arrangement. I'm just interested from a historical point of view. Uh-huh. Uh, is that all you can tell me about the Donners? Yep. Now do I get the thousand iron men? You've offered nothing. I pay nothing. Sun setting. Oh, half hour daylight yet. Oh, good. Good. Hand me my binoculars. I'm going to try to find that tree. I don't want to waste any time. But I'll be back by dark. And maybe I'll find it before then. Oh, Mr. DeLong, plenty worried. Yeah. <laughs> Sooner or later, he's going to run plum out of trees. And even I can't chop down every tree in the Wasatch. Uh, why he's having me do all this chopping beats me. Well, we sleep now. And we go home tomorrow, Joe Coot. What? Are you talking to me? Oh, yeah, a little hard to hear, and since I fought them there grizzly bars, uh, uh, we going back to Naughty, uh, back to Alaska tomorrow, huh? And so I reckon Bill give me a medal or something for being the best international secret agent anywhere. Why? What'd I you could... find out? Well, not much. We found that thing Mister DeLong is after. It's something he's ready to give his life for. Direct. He has a small piece of old-time parchment paper with some old writing on it that he values above everything. Correct. This big clue. But he don't let us see. Also, he lie when he say he look for lost jewelry. Correct. I wire all this to Bill. Maybe he fit puzzle pieces together. Uh, did you tell Bill about them trees? Oh, I did. Correct. Even I thought of that. But the caribou ain't never gonna figure it out. That crazy the long critter is looking for something he thinks maybe one of them donners hid in a holler tree. But... Oh, who'd climb up 60 or 70 feet or more to hide? Say, that snow. It was over 40 feet deep and... And wh- they was on top of the snow. And the trees has growed since then, so 40 foot of snow plus the way a tree will grow. Are you sure anything hidden in a hollow tree back there in that 1846 winter? It'd be, might be 50 or 60 feet up. Sure, I had that figured out all along. <laughs> Stumpy, do you know what? Huh? What? I think maybe you are the world's greatest secret agent. <laughs> Cold this morning. Cold. Colder than before. Yep. Winter due pretty soon. Yep. I don't have too many days left. I think I. Hey! Hey, that tree! That tree over there, look! The top is bent and twisted. Cut it down, cut it down. No! Hurry up. I'm not paying you to loaf. Get busy, faster. Get a move on. Don't just stand there. Faster. This is the tree. I know it. I just know it. Hurry up. Right where it's been for a hundred years, hidden in this hole in the tree. A little lead cylinder, sealed tight. A 
And now to read what's written on this little scrap of paper. Uh, yes, just, just as I thought, yes, yes. Now we can get started. Caribou, get ready to... What are you pointing that rifle at me for? Put it down. We've a journey to make. Not till you do some talking. Stand still, Ed. Why, I'll... Stand still, Sad. While you were scrambling over them there bushes, this here little book fell out of your pocket. And this here old paper. I done read it. It was read by Tamson Donner. It tells how they hid the instructions in an owl's nest in a holler tree, wrapped up in a sheet of lead. Caribou, I don't know what you You had me chop down all them there trees until you found them instructions. Now, you read me what's read on your paper. All right. I imagine we'll need each other. This paper has four words on it, that's all. Here they are. Cave on Hastings Ledge. Well, come on. Where are we going? Well, Hastings Ledge, of course. Is Bill back yet? No, but he sent a letter. Say he think he know what Mr. DeLong looked for. That old jury? No. Bill say Mr. DeLong talk too much and brag. Tell how we find paper in all book. Give him clue. Start look for what he trying to find. What, did the paper say what it was? No. Bill think paper not safe. They'll ask all men, bookmen. They tell how Mr. DeLong read all book about Donner Party. Then Mr. DeLong talk too much. They'll read book too. Hunt for clue. You find clue. The jewelry clue? No. Mr. DeLong, book fellow, book expert. This give Bill idea. He find out Donner family take a long Bible. This Bible never found after trouble. Oh, but you don't mean to say that Mr. DeLong was... <laughs> Mr. DeLong, hunt for that Bible. Donner family have old Bible 400 years old by now. Very old Bible called Coverdale Bible. Hmm, but oh, well, Mr. If... DeLong want that Bible. He wanted bad. But well, what's this? Coverdale Bible? It worth sixty thousand dollars. So when you come across that first paper, you figured it was a clue to them there jewels. Yes, yes, that's it. It's the jewelry. I can only get uh, that. Looks top. like your cave, right up ahead there. See ya? Yes, yes, hurry. <laughs> there she is. And there's your box. Tucked away back here on that little shelf of rock. At last. At long last. High and dry and safe and secure after a hundred years. And I found it. Yeah. And I just decided to give you one-tenth of the value. What? Yep. And this here sharp rifle is my argument. You get one-tenth value of them there jewels, and oh. I... Oh, yes, yes, sure, that's fair. Yes, you can have most of the money from what jewelry we find. Huh? Well, bust her open. <sighs> and there it is. There it is. What do you mean? Ain't nothing but an old book. Where's the jewelry? <laughs> there isn't any, I guess. Just this, this old book, as you say. Give me that. Get me for you. All this work for nothing. I'm going to fling this old book into the cabin. No, 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 give, no. It. Give, give it back. Give it back, uh, I see. Hang on. Give us that. The rock slide. Our find and yelling started a slide. Let's get out of here fast. I'm saving my hide no matter what. I, I can't move. My foot's gone. Help me. Oh, please, help me. days pinned under this rock. No water. Dying of thirst alone in the wilderness. <laughs> I can't move. And here's the Coverdale Bible. Worth sixty thousand dollars. But worth nothing to me now. Nothing. 
That's odd. The Bible lays there under my hand. Open at the book of the Psalms. I am weary of my crying. My throat is dried. Mine eyes fail while I wait for my God. Oh, God, thou knowest my foolishness, and my sins are not hid from thee. Oh, God, I've been wrong all along. I wanted this Bible not for the word it contains, but for the money I could sell it for. Oh, God, forgive me. As soon as I determined that DeLong was hunting for that Bible, I flew out to talk to him and try to reason with him so he wouldn't senselessly cut down all those trees. And? I found the caribou down in the canyon with two broken legs. He'll recover all right. A sadder and wiser mountain man. I found DeLong pinned under a big rock. I pried him loose and he was better than ever. Better than ever? Before he was pinned by that rock, he was a pagan. But when he got out, he was a Christian. Lying there, helpless, dying, hopeless, he read the Bible and was converted. And now? And now the Coverdale Bible is back with the Donner family with DeLong's blessing. DeLong plans to write a book about the last secret of the Donners and his Christian adventure. In fact, he's already hired a man from the West to help him. Who? The Caribou. I'll see you next week for more adventure with Ranger!